Well, we have the pleasure now of having Wayne Halliburton to speak to us this afternoon at our fellowship. Wayne is from this church, Greenford Baptist Church. He didn't get much notice to come. He's been very, very willing. It's really nice. Should we give him a round of applause? Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Wednesday Fellowship. I'd just like to say it's a real honor and a privilege for me to be here. If I were to tell you the road in which it took me to get to the Wednesday Fellowship, it would take all day long. But I'm just going to speak to you for about 20 minutes, so bear with me. Um, I'd like to take time out to thank Susan for your wonderful prayers. You know, God is in everything. He is the creator and sustainer of the universe. And right now, I feel like God has sent me here to share a lesson that I learned recently. Um, as my wonderful sister in Christ, Linda, pointed out, I only had a couple of days to prepare something. I thought, should I come with a freestyle? That is, no notes, just let God speak for me. But then... Um, I learned a very valuable lesson last week. And the lesson I learned was it is okay to have authority, but it is even better to have authority with tenderness. Last week I learned about authority with tenderness. So for most of us, our first contact with or an authority figure would be our parents. Some parents are naturally strict and offer a disciplinarian parental regime. Don't do this, don't do that. If you do that, you're gonna get punished. Some parents are, have a laid back, easygoing style of parenting where it takes a lot of cajoling and a lot of misbehavior for them to get upset or lose their temper. My parents, Mr. and Mrs. Halliburton, were a mixture of both. My mother was very strict. She was the disciplinarian. She wasn't averse to using physical force to put her point across occasionally. Yes, I wince even now. I think oh, my mum is a big lady, you see. Yeah, so if I see my mum coming with the look, I try to hide. But I couldn't get away. Um, she wasn't known for her tenderness. My father was the most easygoing, laid-back man you could wish to meet. He wasn't known for overt moments of emotion when I was a young boy, but he was incredibly generous and giving of himself. And now in his later years, he and I have become incredibly close, even though he lives back home in Jamaica. Um, and I have witnessed him become more and more tender towards me, but even more so to his grandchildren, my children. Now me, I've been a parent for all my adult life. You may be surprised to know I'm actually 46. I know you wouldn't, you can't tell. <laughs> I'm actually 46 years old and <clears throat> I've been a parent, <clears throat> excuse me, since I was 19 years old. Yeah, I've got 10 children. Yeah, my, yeah no television. <laughs> No television for me. Uh, my wife and I have, my wife and I have seven children, and I have three children from previous relationships. My oldest daughter is 26. So yes, I've been a, 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 I've been a parent for all my adult life, and I'm not ashamed to admit that I've made, <coughs> excuse me, I've made um, more mistakes than I would care to admit, especially with my first children my first three children, indeed, I would say that I was not a very good father. I was a rubbish father. I was selfish. Well, put it this way, I was a horrible fellow. 
I was not a very nice guy. Not very nice at all. None of you lot would have liked me when I was in my 20s. I was not a very nice person. I can, I'm looking around and I know there's some people here who love me now. God is good. Um, all the time. Anyway, I was authority with not a semblance of tenderness. No tenderness whatsoever. It was either my way or the highway. You do as I say or you get out of my way. Um, I would like to think that over the years I have learned from my mistakes and become a father capable of loving tenderness. However, being human, because you know God's ways are not our ways, we are human. Being human, we make mistakes and I made a, a mistake last week that became a huge situation. Um, I often do the school run when I'm not working and on this particular occasion, I have three children who go to Brookside Primary School down in Yedding, a 10-year-old, a 7-year-old, and my 4-year-old son, Ramon. And I was on the school run, and on this occasion, my 10-year-old daughter approached me, and suddenly, she burst into tears. I asked her, what was the matter? Her name's Star. And I said, Star, what's the matter? And she said to me that her classroom assistant thank you so much you're so kind thank you <clears throat> yeah um i asked star what was the matter why are you crying and she said that she felt like the classroom assistant a fellow by the name of or shall i not mention his name i won't mention his name let's call him mr a see him anyway she felt like she had been single diet singled out by Mr. A unjustly and unfairly. Mr. A had accused her of misbehaving in class. Now, anybody who knows Star knows that she's not a girl who misbehaves in school. She loves school. She misbehaves at home. Oh my gosh. If she can misbehave, mm -mm. excuse me while I take a sip of water. I got about 10 throgs in my throat. <clears throat> yes, that's better. Anyway, <clears throat> the classroom assistant, yes, so Star was crying. I asked her what's wrong. She said that Mr. A had unfairly and unjustly, in Star's opinion, accused her of misbehaving. Mr. A was standing quite nearby. So, <clears throat> apparently, because I don't, I can't see myself, so apparently, I approached Mr. A rather brusquely, shall we say. And as you can see, I'm not a small fellow. You know, I do, I would say I have a, a bold characteristic. I face problems head on. I don't hide from problems. And as you can imagine, my daughter is one of my most precious possessions. So if she's upset, I am upset. So, Apparently, I approached Mr. A rather brusquely and I spoke to him in a way which some may see as quite intimidatory. My daughter actually said, Dad, do you know what you said to Mr. A? You said, yo, Mr. A, you have a problem with Star? <laughs> so you can imagine, I got my little rude boy face on and, yo, Mr. A, go on, go on. Anyway, by this time, I was quite close to Mr. A, and my daughter was still sobbing. So, in my protective father mode, I cupped my daughter's face and began to wipe away her tears. But according to somebody who was watching through a window, I was not acting tenderly, but I was actually squeezing my daughter's face. It appeared to some people that I was being rough, yeah, with my daughter, as if I was angry with my daughter. Well, as I said before, anyone who knows me knows I can be, on occasions, quite abrasive. And at this moment, it would seem that I was, although I felt I was being a protective father. 
And it was because of this apparent abrasive approach I was called into the school for a meeting with the education welfare officer and I had to field telephone calls from the social services. Believe you me. Or because I had approached the classroom assistant with an accusatory tone and an unforgiving heart, apparently. In hindsight, you know, hindsight is very good. We can all look back and see where we've gone wrong. In, in hindsight, I could see that, indeed, I was not very tender. And I began to consider how the situation could have been averted. The situation could have been averted if I had shown authority with tenderness. How does one show authority with tenderness? Well, in my humble opinion, it comes down to love. And I have found 10 ways in which love is the solution. Number one, listen without interrupting. Proverbs 18, 13 covers this. It says, he who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. I should have taken a moment to listen to the classroom assistant to hear his side. Number two, speak without accusing. James chapter 1, 19 says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak speak and slow to become angry. I saw my daughter upset and I was upset straight away. Mistake. Three, we should give without sparing. Proverbs 21, 26 says, all day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. In the situation with my daughter's classroom assistant, I should have given him time to explain his side of the story. Four, pray without ceasing. Colossians 1.9 states, For these reasons, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. It goes without saying, I did not wait a moment and pray. I should have waited even two seconds to say, Dear Lord, not even a second that takes. Guide me and protect me. If I had, I have no doubt the whole situation would have been handled differently. Five, answer without arguing. Proverbs again, 17.1 says, better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of fasting with strife. If I had approached a classroom assistant with calm, the outcome again would have been different. Six, share without pretending. In Ephesians chapter four, verse 15, it says, instead, Speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. Goes without saying, love conquers all. I should have shown the classroom assistant, Mr. A, more love. Seven, enjoy without complaint. Philippians 2, 14 tells us, do everything without complaining or arguing. In this situation, with my daughter and the classroom assistant, arguing became harmful and created a false impression of me. Because I, I can be quite calm, believe you me, under stress. I don't do panic. I'm always telling my missus, I don't panic. My missus, she's a panicker, you know? I don't do panic. I just stay cool, calm, and collected, I like to think. Number eight, trust without wavering. In Corinthians, it informs us that love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. I can see now I approached the classroom assistant, Mr. A, not with love, hence the situation becoming more serious than necessary. Number nine, forgive without punishing. Again, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, it states, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I perceived a wrong had been committed against someone I hold dear, my daughter, and my judgment was clouded. Even if he was wrong, I was, I was wrong to make assumptions. I, we, must always be ready to forgive. 
no matter how difficult that might be. And 10, promise without forgetting. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. God created us. He knows us and he loves us. It only makes sense then to listen to his instruction and do what he says. It's like the owner's manual for a car. If you obey God's instruction, you will run right and find his kind of power to live. If you ignore them, as I did last week, you will have breakdowns, accidents, and failures. In our world, we need authority in all aspects of life, but authority without wisdom can be like words in the wind. But authority with tenderness can overcome all situations, good or bad. Thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. How's your daughter now? Good. And is it all sorted out? Good. <laughs> we like to know the endings, don't we? Yeah.